Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the US Emily Coaches Corner. My name's Dr. Paul. Today, I am going to talk to you about why doing more and more questions is sometimes not going to get you the results. One of the most common things that I get in my Instagram DM and my email is I'm doing tons of questions and I'm not getting any better. My scores aren't improving, my assessments aren't getting better, my NBMEs aren't getting better. What am I doing wrong? It's a great question and it's probably the most common question that we get. And so what I'm going to do today is walk you through a some of the reasons why just doing more and more questions doesn't get results and I'm going to give you some strategies that you can implement that will help you fix this. So number 1, if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, set up notifications. Number two, if you enjoy this and find it to be useful, make sure you hit that like button below and please share it with your friends and colleagues. All right, let's dive into the actual meat of this one. First and foremost, when your school administrators or your friends or your colleagues say, just do a ton of questions, but they don't actually give you a strategy behind doing the questions, the advice is flawed. It's like if you want to lose weight and someone says, go to the gym, eat healthy. Okay, but what does that mean? If I just go to the gym and just sit in the parking lot, is that good enough? Well, obviously not. But without saying, go in, do this first, do this second, do this third, you don't know what to do. And the thing is, a lot of people don't know how to actually approach questions to get results. And so without someone who just paints a picture for you step by step, this is what you do. The advice is flawed. And that's why a lot of you guys are doing questions and not improving. And I'm going to walk you through exactly what to do instead. But I want you to realize that, that if someone gives you advice when you're prepping for your exams or just anything, if they don't give you strategies to actually implement their advice, then it's useless. So that's one of the biggest flaws that I've seen over the years. And I've been doing this since 2009, working with students, is people think, hey, just do a ton of questions. Cool. Questions are good. What are you going to do? How are you going to do them? I'm just going to do them. What do you mean? I'm just going to do questions. Okay, timed, untimed. Are you going to stop after every question and, and identify the weakness? Are you going to do the whole block? Are you going to uh, do it in mixed mode? Are you going to do it subject specific? I don't know. I'm just going to do them. Okay, well, without a strategy behind the plan, it's really hard to get the results you want. So that's first and foremost. Keep that in mind. Without the strategy, without the plan, the advice is flawed. Number two, you have to be strategic about questions. Two important things that you should be approaching your question bank with are you want to get better at actually answering questions. So that's one thing. The other is you want to identify your weaknesses so that you can then go work on them. The biggest mistake, and if you take anything out of this video, take this. The biggest mistake students make is they'll do questions. They'll realize, hey, I'm weak in something, but then they'll just keep doing more and more questions. When you are doing questions and you identify areas of weakness, but you just decide, hey, I'm just gonna do more questions because I gotta get through more questions, you're foregoing the opportunity to actually do what the question banks are designed for, which is to help you identify your flaws so that you can fix them. You can't fix a weakness just by going through more and more questions. You have to be laser focused on a weakness. So if you do a block of questions and you realize, that you are really weak with respect to cardiac pathology. Just doing more and more questions, sure, you will expose yourself to more cardiac pathology, but guess what? You're probably not going to get better because what you're doing is you're seeing the same concept asked different ways, and you might not get better. You, you say, hey, I know it's heart failure, but I, I get it wrong again. Uh, I know it is uh, a valvular disease, but I got it wrong again. And then you do more and more, and you wonder, why am I not getting better? The reason why is because you have to take the weakness and then go work on it, right? You can't just expect that more questions will help you fix it. If you identify, hey, I don't really have a grasp on heart failure, then what you need to do is take 25 minutes, 30 minutes, pick up your book and read through heart failure. Understand it. And that's when you take that knowledge and then you go do more questions and then you'll see the improvement. But by just plowing through more and more questions, it's really hard to, to focus in on those weaknesses because some questions might be strengths of yours, some questions might be weaknesses, some might be intermediates, but what you really want to do is find the weaknesses, then go and improve those weaknesses, then come back and assess yourself. So it's really important that you take time 
to document every single mistake you make and pinpoint what is the underlying principle here. So if you screwed up a question and the underlying principle is heart failure, maybe heart failure is something you need to pay attention to. Is it a valvular disease? Then you need to go back and you need to look at valvular diseases. I don't care what the question is asking you. At the end of the day, ask yourself at the very foundation of this question, what are they testing me on? Document it. And then maybe at the end of the day, you want to go check everything and read at the end of the day and fix your weaknesses. That's fine. You don't have to do it after every question, but you have to document and then you have to put some time into actually fixing those weaknesses. Trust me, if you do that, if you do fewer questions, but you identify your weaknesses, go fix them and then come back and do some more questions, you will get better. And that's the whole point of doing questions. Get better at questions, but also find your weaknesses so you can fix them. Now, once you have done this, you've worked on your weaknesses, you've come back and you've assessed yourself. If you do better, that's great. What you still want to make sure you do, though, is consistently review anything that's ever been a weakness of yours until you can confidently say, hey, I've answered you know, half a dozen questions on this without any issues. Then you can say, okay, it's not a weakness anymore. Maybe you move it to your intermediate pile, meaning you review it every week or so instead of every day because now it's in your long-term memory. Now you just got to keep it somewhat fresh. But at the end of the day, if you follow a strategy with respect to questions where you use them as sort of the uh, jumping off point for fixing weaknesses, you will get so much further with a lot less effort. Because if you are not getting better and you do more and more questions and you're not getting better, you're going to do more and more questions. And then you're not going to get better. More and more. It's just this never-ending cycle. Whereas if you do a block of questions, identify weaknesses, go fix them. You come back, hey, now I'm stronger. That's the way you consistently move upwards as opposed to a lot of students who pretty much stay the same if all they're doing is questions, but then guess what happens? You've done question banks two, three times and you're still not getting them right because, well, you might be getting some right because you remember them, but you're not getting a lot right because you don't know the principle. And what happens is you start to lose motivation. So instead of just staying flat, students actually go down. Okay, so that's the big takeaway here. Number one, use question banks the right way. Number two, don't be afraid to step away from the question bank for a minute to fix your weaknesses and then come back. Because if you do that, you're going to see improvements. If you just think, I got to get through more and more questions, your thinking is flawed. And that's okay. That's why you're here. Hopefully, you're understanding that it's not a matter of quantity, it's a matter of quality. And if you simply come out of this video understanding that, you will be well-equipped to improve significantly faster than most other people. And you will see consistent improvements in your scores, your assessments, your NBMEs, and ultimately on your exams. Okay, so a lot of students make the mistake of thinking that this is a quantity game. Yes, you need to do a full question bank, at least one, because you want to make sure you expose yourself to everything. But at the end of the day, if you've gone through one question bank, you've identified all your weaknesses and you fix those weaknesses, that's pretty much as good as it's going to get. Then if you have time, you could do another question bank to keep testing yourself. But if you've done that right, then one question bank should be all you need to get to where you want to be as long as you're following these principles and actually working on your weaknesses and not just moving forward without giving them the attention they deserve. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that was helpful. If you have questions, let us know. If you found that to be helpful, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button below, share it with your colleagues. And if you're not yet subscribed and you want me to let you know every time we release brand new episodes, hit that subscribe button below, set up notifications. I'll let you know every time we release a brand new episode. Appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. We'll see you on the next episode.